Thank you, Jan. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tom. Tom yeah, um, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me first start by by uh, thanking Jan, the ODI team, uh, for what I think is, is is very interesting work and part of a of a bigger uh, a, a bigger uh, work program that that started a few years ago in part with a, a group called the Development Gateway and others, in trying to gather all the data about development aid on, on disaster uh, risk management, which is kind of, uh, at, at GFDR, we, we started this work in, in with the object of trying to inform the international community about what was, uh, where is the money going, what is happening, how is it being spent. Um, and, uh, and I'd like people to understand the scale of this effort, right? We, we've had, uh, through Development Gateway, hundreds of <coughs> students being paired and going through almost a million uh, record of projects over the last 30 years, which represents, uh, I think, d almost $3.5 trillion in, in development aid, identified in this package about $106 billion of projects related in one way or another to disaster or yeah, post-disaster, exante disaster response, risk reduction, floods, whatever tag name you could find, uh, of which, uh, again, uh, part of this 13.5 billion were identified on, on risk reduction. Uh, that was a huge piece of work in going through, and having several people going through the same record, because of course you want, you want to have some back check and you want to make sure. So the, the figures you see here is actually the result of, of two years of work on going through all these records. Um, now, I'll have basically three, three comments. The first, I'd like to say a few words about this data. Uh, I'd like to say a, a, a few words about where this is going and what we're trying to do with, uh, uh, with, with, with this data and these different reports that are being published. And then tell you that at the end of the day, and I like, uh, I'm happy that Jan had a piece of his presentation which was a bit more optimistic, because personally I'm quite optimistic. I think that we start to see uh, a certain movement toward more intervention in, in, in risk reduction, and I'll explain that. Now on the data, you can imagine the struggles of the team who, who had to go through all these records and then had to decide what to classify where. I mean, should you count support to agriculture as a way of mitigating the risk of, uh, of drought in in the Sahel and the Horn of Africa? Should you uh, include, uh, how do you account for the DR part of reconstruction and recovery at, at the World Bank? We, every time we, we do, uh, we finance reconstruction, we really try to, first, to make sure the same vulnerability is not being created, but to integrate in there a few elements that, that will really try to change the status quo, ch change practices that in the past have led to uh, uh, to these vulnerabilities that, that lead to uh, disaster. Um, Jan talked about the fact that a lot of the funding is concentrated in, in a few big countries. Uh, well, if you, if you take India as one data point, it's like, well, how can you say that the money is going to the right place or, or not? India is a very big country with huge disparities. It's it would be great to go into more detail and do it state by state and almost county by county, but obviously that, uh, that is uh, virtually impossible at this, at this stage. But I think what is important is really the big picture, the message that, that this data tells us. And, and, and Jan's last graph is, is pretty evocative of this. It's the fact that over the last 20 years, the large, the vast majority is still going in responding to disaster. Uh, big part of that in humanitarian aid. I want to bring a caveat. I hope this report doesn't say that we should do less development aid, because this is certainly not the message that we're trying to convey. To the contrary, uh, uh, I think development aid will continue to be needed. Uh, it is certainly uh, saving life uh, on, a, uh, on an everyday basis. But maybe we can do a little bit better in, in, in increasing and, and focusing on, on reducing the risk at its source and trying to really address the, the root cause of disaster. I think that that comes out very, very clearly uh, from, uh, from the analysis. Um, now, where's, where's this 
we're going, this is, as, as I said, part of a very big uh, program of work also in collaboration with the UNISDR in trying to get DR recognized and, 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 and accounted for uh, in part by the, uh, by the OECD DAC system. And so we've started uh, quite a few months ago with, with Gillian here a program in trying to encourage uh, the OECD to integrate this. I think we're making good progress. I think the donors are, are uh, in fact, quite keen to see this. And part of this is not just so that we know where the money is going, but it's also based on the, the principle that it's not just you m that you measure what you do, but in fact that you get what you measure. If you start measuring disaster risk reduction, well, then maybe people will start paying a little bit more attention to it, a little bit more an incentive system than, than uh, anything else. Uh, and, and as I said, uh, uh, that's uh, something which is progressing quite well. Maybe Julian can say a few words on this uh, uh, later on. Now, uh, I wanted to finish by saying that I am actually quite optimistic. If you, if you look at, at the trend, uh, we see an increase in the, last, in the last few years. We certainly feel it uh, at the World Bank where this has become kind of a core sector of activities. We've seen our staff on this topic growing from barely 20 uh, a couple of years ago to, to more than 100 staff fully dedicated to uh, disaster risk reduction. And their role is really to integrate this uh, and work with all the other uh, sectorial teams. So it, it has a huge um, mainstreaming and, and leveraging effect. It is now part of the scorecard of the World Bank. It's part of the uh, negotiation on ADA <coughs> replenishment. It's really part of many of our, of our discussion. It was a core topic of the annual meeting of the World Bank and the IMF uh, last year in Japan, uh, really presenting to, to more than 100 ministers of finance the fact that uh, disaster are there to stay. It's disaster loss are increasing uh, almost in an exponential uh, trend. And we really need, if we want to put countries in the path to sustainable development and, and um, achieve our goal of, of reducing poverty, we, we have to start integrating this dimension in our <coughs> uh, development program. Uh, I think part of this is, 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 is a result of all this movement towards resilience. People actually think more about it. I think uh, it will certainly I think we, we start to see, and, and, and Jan has shown this trend of, of uh, climate adaptation funding starting to uh, trickle into the disaster risk reduction agenda, which is also the result of five to ten years of learning how to do disaster risk reduction. I think we've made huge progress in terms of the concept, the instruments. At the World Bank, we've created quite a few interesting instruments to finance disaster risk reduction that are now coming on stream and are being used uh, uh, more and more. Uh, so we're using more and more tools to analyze risk and, and integrate it. And finally, the most, the most uh, encouraging trend is to see that actually countries themselves are picking it up. And I think that graph was, was probably the most striking, where you see that Indonesia, which has gone through quite a few dramatic uh, events in the last five years, is now investing heavily in this field. And, and, and I think you can say the sa same about Colombia, about Mexico, about uh, China, uh, which are uh, countries that are highly exposed, but which really have taken this agenda seriously and uh, have started investing. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Francis.